I'm sure all of you are familiar with iOS 15, 16, and 17 because, face it, there's no one who hasn't used a 6S or an S yet at this stage, and today we'll be looking into what iOS 1 looked like, the stepping stone for the touch-orientated smartphones. Like, there were the N95 and I, I think the Samsung Chocolate or some shit like that. Although they were touch they didn't do it well. They were resistive, and quite literally, the screen was resisting your bloody finger. Um, and this is the video that's going to be having a look at what it can do and how far you can really get in today's day and age. Now, yes, we will be looking at an iPod Touch because iPhone 2Gs, first of all, are extremely hard to find at a flea market, let alone being on iOS 1, because if they did that, they would have been mad, completely, utterly bonkers. Now, to give some contextual information, the iPhone 2G was released in 4, 8, and 16 gigabytes. However, this thing, I believe, was released with an 8 and a 16. Um, pretty sure further revisions brought a 32 gigabyte. Anyways, it was released on iOS 1.1.1 on September. 14th of 2007. Now, I'm not using the most reputable source, also known as Wikipedia. It also says that there was the iTunes store, which I can confirm is on there. Calendar clock calculator and photos. Um, another true and strange fact is... Someone actually managed to get this running on QMU. I'm not sure why you'd want to, as it's, it's so useless. Even when it first came out, it didn't actually serve a purpose because it was executed so poorly. Without further ado, let's turn the device on. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that, oh, there's that pretty earth and there's also a slide to unlock, but I guess that's where the features immediately end as you'll see what happens when we unlock it. There's all the applications. Another thing I'd like to point out is how bare bones the iPod Touch one really was, with it having no speaker, a headphone jack, and volume buttons. That's all it actually had. It's just power and home. So I guess it was the defective version of a 2G, I guess, it's once the Mac's employee sat on it enough times, you got this, the slimmed down version. Now, I have an iPhone 3G, which is not quite the 2G, but it's very similar, and you can immediately see what a chongster the normal ones had. This also leads us to the second problem, which thankfully mine does not have remotely. That being the battery, these things were made with such cost cutting I guess in general Apple fashion just pump it out as many as you can that's not the issue though because they're over 15 years old at this stage they're starting to fail and bloat and in some cases they have actually leaked onto devices effectively corrupting whatever's there just burning away the traces now on a more positive note the screens on these things actually weren't bad for the day. When you had a look at something like a Samsung Young or a much cheaper device like these things were nasty. That's 2011 as well. So yeah, first application we're going to be looking at is I guess clock. So. I guess this is the only saving grace for this device is that it has a clock. It's, I guess, the most usual, usable um, function apart from the music, as you'd hope an iPod would. But then again, iOS 1 had nothing to offer. Those stopwatch, timer, alarms, that I guess would break because this thing counts much faster time than my computer does. Yeah, I have no idea what's with it. And I also forgot to mention that these are all the apps that came with this thing, and I am not updating it by any means, so 
these are all the apps that this thing will ever have. And for you keen viewers, yes, there is YouTube on there, but you could probably imagine that it isn't going to work by any shot. I don't think it worked after 2012 because YouTube just, or Apple rather, cut it off saying, oh, we've got an app store now. Why don't you bozos or boomers just hop onto the internet? Um, this thing, uh, yeah, it hasn't been connected to the internet in forever, and I don't want to either. So, there's that. The third app is Calendar, um, which you could, yeah, you could probably imagine isn't functioning right. There's not much to it. It's about as simple as you can get. Fourth app is Contacts. So, yep, you can add a contact. I think it was in the Apple demo as well. So you can be like, first, last, Yep. IBS management, which is irritable ba bowel syndrome. I love working for them. There we go. Oh, IBS management. I am such a good guy. Yep. Sweet. So there's contacts. This is quite a quick review because there's nothing to review. I do believe this thing could actually play 40p video. Not that there's anything on here and why it's trying to look like, I guess, an iPad stuck on a TV stand. Uh, probably a old um, Sony Bravia too, that, that could be the um, case. Now, the calculator app, I guess, is quite different in many ways because it looks horrible, even for Apple's standards. I have no idea which engineer thought, yes, let's put Play-Doh plasticized yucky poo colored buttons that I would guess would suit the pod in like a beta phase, like saying, oh, look, you can type in 69 times 420. Funny number. E plus 12. But who, I don't get it. It doesn't serve a purpose except for doing very basic calculations because it's not fixed to an LC, like a clear cut LCD segmented, I guess, um, since it's another better big chungus LCD. Now, Safari time. Yeah, you can see I had preloaded a web page onto here. Browser test, and none of the websites actually worked. As you could probably imagine, this is quite outdated. Uh, yeah. So, there's Safari. I can guess I can look into the other options. So, new page. Great. Oh, I am a professional researcher. There we go. Yep, that was Safari. You just go beep boop bop beep boop bump, and you load it up like how to make toast and eggs dot com with Joe Mama and yeah, you get the point. The iTunes Store. I don't even know what's on it. Like featured. Uh, well, it's offline and there's no data on there because it's an iPod. So wow. See that's. Oh, what Apple engineering, you figured out that you wouldn't, you wouldn't connect or you weren't connecting? Damn. Nope. Lock the app immediately. Oh, that, that's some great engineering right there. So I, we've done all of that. Now there's only two applications left. Shocker, there's so many on there to look at. And I'm going to leave music for last because this nugget was used all right. And then abandoned for some reason. It isn't actually scratched as well, or at least not as much. Not even as much as the one I got from CX a while back. So, settings time. I guess you can't really complain about it being so slow, because you can't downgrade any further, you can't get any more performance out of it. So, there is actually automatic brightness, and there is a brightness slider. I had it low because the glare that comes off the back of my phone and the spatula from this thing is not great. So some general doodars. We've got about wallpaper, which I guess is quite deceiving because it's a lock screen paper. You know what, Mona Lisa. Yep. Set as wallpaper. That was pretty good, that was pretty fancy. Um, date and time. So, I'm going to leave it as it is, because, yeah, guys, it's still the Y2K, you know, it's February, it's actually 
5.41 in the afternoon, which, no it's not, it's even got the minutes wrong. Next is international. See, this is how you apply for visas from Apple, you just... Oh no, it's just a keyboard. Alright. So, password lock, order lock, I don't really care about them, they're pretty self-explanatory. Sound effects, both. Yeah, so this was a feature from the iPods, which... I think I should have one ready. Yeah. Can ya? Oh, oh, it's, it's still got a bit of juice. There we go. So, yeah. Settings. Uh, where is it? Clicker. So, yeah. These iPods didn't actually have speakers, but I guess they had clickers. You can consider them that. Um, I don't know where you'd find the click wheel, because, like, I, I certainly haven't on this thing. Music, I guess, is quite similar to the iPod edition as well, like for the scroll wheels, click wheels, whichever one you consider it as. You've got EQ with very basic settings. Um, I think, yeah, iOS 17 or something, I'm pretty sure it has the same thing as well. I don't use it, however, because I think iPhones are ass. So, TV signal. Um, that that That's actually a pretty cool feature, but... I haven't seen any accessories or actual gadgets that allow this feature, so... TV out, um, unless your Sony Bravia, as I said before, just has a massive 30 pin stuck to the side of it. I don't think you're going to get any video out. Even though I have plugged in um, 30 pin to VGA and DVI and all that, they don't work. It just says this accessory is not supported. So with Safari, that's quite interesting. You've got developer. Whoa. Debug. Let's go. Like Bethesda. Find a bug and call it a feature. Apple's quite the opposite. So, whoo, mate. Crikey. Yep. Um, contacts, as we said before, first, last name, or last first name. Yeah, so... Th th that's quite simple. It took, what, like... Four or so minutes to go through the entire settings menu. And this leaves us to the surprise at the end. Let's look at the music. I forgot I let this overplay, uh, or autoplay overnight. Um, I was just fiddling around with it, and I haven't actually charged it in weeks, so how the hell this thing is still going is quite intriguing to even me. So... These iPods, I guess, are quite nice because the fifth generation is effectively the same thing, but fuglier. If it, no, oh, it does have, no, it doesn't. Oh, well, with these, if you tilted it sideways, um, the video would display similar to what I'm going to do with this thing. And that is, it gives all the album covers. I believe the same thing was with Mac OS. Um, 10.4's initial release for Intel, or 10.3's final sort of, I guess, update package. But it's it's quite a nice feature where you can scroll through the music and have a look at all the stuff that's put on here. Most of this is just garbage techno music that they got from the um weekly free song. But that's it. The iOS that changed the world with no app store, very little USB support, and just garbage options that's what people tuned in for and that's what led to this the iphone 69 pro max super duper turbo and yeah this has been a lamborghini and i've been s6 edge 7 so till next time i'll see ya